Hi there, Stephanie here. I want to share what I've been thinking about lately related to something called cognitive load theory. This is something I've been looking into a little bit and trying to refine the way that I talk about it because I've been getting questions about working memory and questions or comments that lead me to believe that educators are misunderstanding and thinking that something they're calling productive struggle would be helpful for beginning or struggling readers. And that is not the case. I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. Uh, making mistakes, practicing mistakes are really unfortunate events, especially for beginning and struggling readers. So this idea of cognitive load theory is uh, something that has been newly uh, put out into the world based on a lot of research over a long period of time in cognitive or learning science. So what reading science sits within this, this broader uh, base of how humans learn and, and the research on that topic. And we can think about some elements related to cognitive load theory um, in two ways, that, that there are limits to what we can put our attention on, what we can process in the moment, and also that there don't seem to be limits to the amount of information that we can process that's in our stored uh, memory, the amount of stored information that we can assimilate or act on or apply. So uh, you might be familiar with working memory as a, as a concept. That has to do with what you are focusing your attention on in the moment, like right now, hopefully, this, this video. Uh, working memory can easily become overwhelmed and overloaded. And in the classroom, that's a really bad place for students to be. It impairs learning in a variety of ways. If students' working memory is being taxed, they are not going to learn new content. In fact, they might misunderstand the content that you are hoping for them to learn. That new content will not be stored uh, into their long-term memory for retrieval and use later, and their learning overall will be slowed down. So we don't want the scenario, if we can help it, in the classroom where working memory is overloaded or, or taxed. Um, there's two ways that I would encourage you to think about working around those limitations to working memory. And that would be, first of all, teaching foundational and essential skills to automaticity. And second would be building and creating and, and making use of schemas. So when we think about reading instruction, we can think about the essential skills that we know about, those five essential early literacy skills particularly phonemic awareness, vocabulary, phonics, and reading text fluently. Those are skills that need to be overlearned, right? We need students to not just know how to do those things, all the things that make up those big essential skill areas, but to be able to do them without conscious thought, to be automatic. This is why so many screening assessments are timed and why that's important, because we don't just want accuracy we need automaticity of those essential skills so that the brain doesn't have to focus on them, so that our working memory is not taxed when we are asked to understand text that we're reading. And then this idea of, of building schemas is a way to organize and store information to move it from that working memory into more long-term memory so that it's organized and stored in a, in a way that facilitates retrieving the information again in the future. That's ultimately what we want. So we can think about reading instruction that might facilitate these processes that would take advantage of uh, what's called cognitive load theory. We don't have a lot of research in this area. There are a few uh, well-constructed studies that suggest explicit instruction is more effective than implicit learning, especially when it comes to uh, beginning instruction with, with novice learners. More of the research has been done with math and science than with reading, but, but this is emerging. 
there's problems with this research, challenges with the methods that have been used, problems with even defining some of the terminology and concepts within cognitive load theory, and with transferring the way the research is done into how instruction happens in classrooms. So don't get the impression that this is like the be all and end all and you've been missing out and this is the missing link that you've been waiting for. That's not the case, but it is something that should be on your radar uh, and that you should be watching for and you should be aware of. So how do we take advantage of what is known in the learning research, in the cognitive science, and apply it to our reading instruction and intervention? These things are not going to surprise you, and this is not an exhaustive or expansive list, but some things that are coming to mind for me include the fact that you want to start when you're teaching new concepts and skills with an explicit demonstration and model. You want to make sure you're using clear examples and non-examples, that you're connecting new learning to what your students already know, and that you are providing enough practice opportunities once students are accurate to build automaticity, to move from accuracy to automaticity. Don't move on to that next skill in the scope and sequence unless students have demonstrated instant and effortless recall of the information that you have previously taught. And then a final uh, suggestion would be to make sure that you're using good, effective instructional routines. So students' attention is not splintered or fractured or they're not having to think about what's coming next or what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to signal or say something or you know, write something down? The routine will support that focus and um, help to minimize the uh, multiple distractions or, or things that students might direct their working memory, their, their current thinking to. So that's a short list of some things you might consider. Hopefully that gives you some additional evidence and support for those good, high quality, structured literacy, explicit instructional practices that you're already using. We want us all to get some science.